Hey there guys, Tom here. Welcome back to my movie channel and thank you very much for joining me for this, my review of the brand new Robert Pattinson DC movie, The Batman. The Batman was directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, uh, John Turturro, and uh, other people. And this is a movie about The Batman. So, uh, and I'm not doing this review today alone. I'm joined by my friend James. James, how you going? Hello. That's it? Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about the Batman in a completely non-spoiler way. So if you have not yet seen the Batman, don't worry. You are safe from all spoilers in this video. So, James, I'm going to start with you. I want to get your thoughts on the Batman. Well, the Batman is, in simple terms, a bad film. <laughs> Why are we talking like that? <laughs> I have no idea. But then again, we obviously don't want everyone to know that this is the second time we've done this because the microphone messed up on the first time Dude, and I didn't realise how quiet it was. By the way, we, got four, we recorded a 40-minute long video, which I thought was a really good discussion beforehand. It, it will be more natural than this. And the audio didn't work. This is kind of like we have to remember what we said. So, yep. The Batman. What right. did you, you thought it was a bad movie. I... So, as I said in the previous session, which nobody will be able to see because that is for our eyes only. And our ears only, his thank God. eyes only, and hopefully his ears only, yeah. because I hate seeing myself. Um, it's not a good film. I think my, opi my opinion of it has softened since I saw it last night, wherein there was not a single scene I liked. And a big part of that came down to, I guess, what you could call a medical reason, in that it is a dark film, not thematically, visually, with bright lights. When you flash bright lights in a dark room, it can hurt, and it did cause me a huge amount of discomfort. So a lot of the scenes, I ended up closing my eyes for at least part of them. And so many of the scenes in which I probably would have liked in the end, I didn't see much of. And that's just how it was. See, I... Okay, I was really excited about this movie. I really was. I was super pumped about it. Love Batman. Batman's my guy. Ben, ben Affleck, by the way, is still my favourite Batman. Um... I, look, I was really excited about this film. Matt Reeves, director of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which is a fucking great movie. And then Wolf of the Planet of the Apes, which I liked. I didn't love. It's got problems. The Batman is a movie that ultimately let me down. And I think it comes down to the writing of this film. I wasn't overly impressed with the story. Um, and that's that's what it comes down to, really. The, the two most important things in a movie is character and story. And if you deliver on both, you've got a solid recipe for for a good movie for success. I didn't think the story of this movie was all that great. And I felt like the, the, the Batman leans more into the detective element of the Batman character, which I appreciated. But I feel like it ultimately sort of... I don't feel that the, the, it came to a satisfying conclusion in this film. Um, James, I know, I know you feel sort of similarly to me about that. Largely, I feel the same. This was a um, this was a film which, on paper, should have been the perfect Batman film. But when you actually get into it and you watch through it, it's just not fun. How dare you steal my line, sir? Oh, was that was my criticism. I didn't. It I was. definitely didn't steal that criticism <laughs> from another one of our friends who also saw oh, the Batman no, movie last night. No. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it also... is. It is on paper. It looks like the perfect Batman movie. I feel like if you read the script for this movie, you're like, "Wow, this sounds great. This is going to look awesome." Mm, yeah, go on. The, I mean, to steal another quote from same said person, <laughs> We're uh, an unnamed person. Yes, the unnamed person, she who shall not be named. Yep. Uh, it thinks, it thinks it's deeper than it actually is. Like ultimately, it is pretty surface level. There's not really any wow moments mm. or anything that actually takes you, make or makes you think. Uh, when you leave the cinema, it's just. To be honest, I think it's just going to be very forgetful. Uh, I don't think there's really going to be much more to it. I wanted um, to love this movie. I wanted to love this movie so bad. And, and, I, can, and I can see why some people would. Sorry. But, yeah, no. Um, so this is going to... I'm just, I've just got riffs for this movie. Like, it's, <laughs> it's not going to end. Um, there's... Uh, people are going to like it. And you know what? That's fine. This isn't Moonfall. This Again, isn't we're not we're not trying to change terrible. someone's mind. You know, there are people that love this movie already, and that's great. Mm. And I don't want to turn this into a let's sit here and bitch and complain about a movie that we didn't love for an hour. Um, but this is a review. 
And as such, we are here to critique and give criticism and commentary on on the Batman. And I felt like the story was weak. And I thought it was a I thought it was a I thought it was a beautiful like look, as far as composition and, and things like that goes, you know, technically it's fine. Um Matt Reeves is good at shooting like action scenes. There are a couple of action scenes like in the trailer, like the 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 where he's chasing the penguin in the car chase scene. That's oh, my yeah. favorite scene in the movie. There are a couple of action scenes. Anytime Batman is punching anybody in the face, loved it. Ate it up. Character wise though, everything was sort of one tone the whole way along. Even the characters sort of one note mm. the whole way along. I didn't think there was much character development at all. And I thought the Riddler had the biggest potential to be really good. The Riddler aspect, not necessarily the character, but as far as finding out, doing the detective work, finding out the clues, deciphering the riddles, I felt like that element of the movie was ultimately a big letdown because a lot of the time, they either spend too much time on it or they skip over it. You know what I mean? Where like there's a scene, Mm. for example, and this is not a spoiler, there is a scene where Alfred walks in to talk to Bruce and he's already solved half the riddle. And it's uh, like, well, we just skipped over, I feel uh, like, yeah. what was crucial information. So, like, to give more detail, it, there is literally a segment where they go from, you shouldn't be working on this, to, I figured this out. There is literally a cut. There's, like, nine hours in between, and it just cuts it, skips all of it, yeah, to immediately solving the riddle. And this happens several times. You will get, uh, they will get the riddle, and then two to three uh, scenes later, they've solved the riddle. This is not a detective film, even though it wants to be a detective film. It's trying so hard to be a detective film. It wants film. so hard to. But this is not a simple favour. My personal preference for um, sort of your detective thriller genre, this isn't a movie where you've got your best friend seemingly drowned to death in a nearby lake but then her son is telling you, oh, by the way, mummy says hi. <laughs> this isn't one of those situations. This is literally, like... I think they failed at what... Mm. I think they failed at their goal, which was a detective Batman. Yeah. And it's noir. I'm, and I felt like it was, I felt like it was unnecessary, unnecessarily noir. Like, it, like was, it was almost like they wanted to make a detective mystery thriller kind of movie and felt like... Well, we should just wrap it up as a Batman package. I could, you know, a bit like how Joker did that with the it, mental health thing, where I felt like Joker, which neither of us liked either. Um, I felt like Joker was they wanted to tell a story about it, m- mental health, and so they just put slapped the Joker label on it. Pretty much, it felt a bit like that. And I think the same. I mean, I'm not. I don't really watch noir films. They're not a genre I'm particularly well versed in. Uh, the biggest two are both Blade Runner movies. Which are, and, which are great, especially the second one. Well, I mean, now the first one's actually too aged for me to enjoy mm. it. Uh, that's just something. When movies get too old, it I tend not to like them more and more. Um, but that was a noir film, and that was successful. That was good. That was interesting. Even the second one, which um, does go on for too long. and It, it was is interesting. Of, it was, and Yeah, the twist is actually meaningful in it there is actual meaning to it you're talking about people who think they exist without living and then when uh, ryan gosling genuinely thinks that he may actually be a living entity not just an existing one he actually lives his life and i feel like in the batman um it's just they ultimately i left this movie thinking what was the point in what i just watched what was I, mean, I supposed to take away from this film? Because the Riddler, the whole movie, is sending riddles and committing crimes and killing people and all this stuff, and he's got a point to prove. And ultimately, I left feeling like, what was the point? What was he trying to... I I don't know. And I felt like the trailers, in a sense, added to my disappointment in this film, because the trailers, obviously, they have to market it as what it is. It is a mystery movie. There is... Things, you know, th- there's going to be shocking secrets throughout the film. And I'm watching the movie and I'm like, there wasn't really any shocking big reveals. Like, like I thought there were going to be, like, the movie led me to believe the entire time. It was like, oh, 
when you you get to the end without again without spoilers, you get to the end and I'm like, oh oh all right, that really that's 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 where we end this movie. O- okay, uh, it just didn't feel satisfying to me. It was like, why did I sit there for almost three hours to get mm. to an ending that I didn't find at all satisfying? I just thought it was kind of all right. That's a that's a movie, you see, know. See, here's the other thing. Uh, I have a word that I am a personal advocate of. I'm actually quite enthusiastic about this word because it comes from my rich heritage of Great Britain or some shit like that. Uh, Tom hated this word for a long time. I think he's softened to it now, but I wouldn't call this movie a wank. It's not a movie that you go in, you come out and think, wow, that was three hours I'm never getting back. This isn't, uh, it's not like Moonfall or Night School or Cats or, which I haven't seen and no, I'm not going to see it. Cats, baby, cats. Um, That's where it's at. No, No, Uh, but you're right. It's not like that. There are things in this movie to enjoy. It was, there are, but it's not a fun movie. It's just bland. Yeah. And it tries to be so, I mean, it tries too hard to be edgy. Yeah. Uh, that much is true. I think it, I think it, again, it focuses on, like, look, okay, a lot of the criticism that Zack Snyder got for his Batman versus Superman, for his Man of Steel, and for Zack Snyder's Justice League, and you know I love me the Snyder Cut, man. I love that movie so much. You know, a lot of his criticisms that he got were it's style over substance. And Zack Snyder is a pretty flary director, right? A lot of slow-mo, a lot of visual effects, which is great. And J.J. Abrams gets the same thing with his lens flares and all that stuff. Matt Reeves sort of... It's style over substance in the opposite direction where it's like this movie was unnecessarily dimly lit. Like they probably saved oh, yeah. like hundreds of thousands of dollars on lighting because there wasn't a single light in the whole movie. Yeah. Um, you then have to wonder where all that money went. Yeah, it exactly. Went where'd to it buying, go? It probably went to buying more memory cards. Yeah, where, where'd it go, right? So, and I I don't know. It's like, And I don't want to sit here and, you know, criticize, oh, it was too dark. I couldn't see what was going on. It's not necessarily that I couldn't see what was going on. It just got annoying. It's like... It's unnecessary. Why does it have to be lit like this? There you are know? Some, so there are some li- literal scenes where you will recognize what's going on simply by silhouettes. Yes. You will not be able to see what any character is doing. Uh, it won't matter what, how they're expressing themselves or anything. It is literally just silhouettes. Uh, and there was like two or three scenes like that. The movie was also way too long. Way, way, way too long. Like, it, this movie is almost three hours, and why? Why was it th- Why was it three hours? So, uh, well, I mean, you had the comment of you felt that maybe it was 45 minutes too long. Mm. I'm more on... I'm, you were I like 90, like you were 90, like 90 minutes. minutes, yeah. Because when I came out of it, I can't... So the more memorable a movie is, I think back to The Intern, Zootopia, Coco, some of my absolute favourite movies, even Wind River, there are multiple scenes that I like that were highly memorable, and the more I like them, the better I remember them. The longer a scene I remember, it also means the more of a movie I liked. Mm. This is one where I can remember now two or three scenes. In Endgame, a similarly... Uh, long movie, it is maybe seven or eight that I can remember. That were exciting. And just memorable. Mm. Like, even if I just set the point at memorable, this is not a memorable movie. Um, This is, I'm actually having a hard time remembering it, which means it's not sticking with me. Yeah, it it sort of was like, it was a bit of a meh movie, in a sense, where I, I just left feeling, I feel so, like, again, I feel really kind of, I feel yucky talking about this movie in such a negative sense because this is a movie I really wanted to love. It had all the makings of such a great movie. you got Matt Reeves in there, who I think is a great director. You've got Robert Pattinson in there, who, forget Twilight for a second, the dude's a phenomenal actor. If you've seen his other work, it's fantastic. Zoe Kravitz is Catwoman. I really like her as Catwoman. Who was, I, sorry, what was she in again? Zoe Kravitz. Uh, she was in You Saw Rough Night. That's right. I She was really yes, good in Rough Night. Me. So... She was 
I th- I really like her. Now, by the way, Anne Hathaway is my favorite Catwoman. I know that's an unpopular opinion. I really liked her as Catwoman. It's not unpopular. It's simply the correct answer. <laughs> it's simply the correct answer. I like Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I really did. And I like that will they, won't they element to Batman and Catwoman's relationship where it's it's kind of sexy and there's sexual tension. And, and I like the scenes where, you know, those two are working together to solve certain things, you know, work out certain things in the movie without giving too much away. Um, those two working together in the film, I like that. I actually, it was the chemistry that worked the best. And so that was a standout to me. Some mm. of the action scenes were standouts. I loved Colin Farrell as Penguin. He was fantastic. I loved that. That He was... Loved that character. I think he was genuinely the best actor in the movie. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe because his like, performance wasn't just... It was, you know... Robert Pattinson so the whole way through is just one note. It's very, you know, it's like this. It's If somebody saw... So, li- literally, uh, if somebody talked to Bruce Wayne and then talked to Batman, it would be, oh, hi, Bruce. Yeah, there was no discernible difference between his voice as Batman versus his voice and as himself. I wouldn't expect it, but like, uh, and obviously we have different opinions on this. I found the acting to be very wooden, and you are going for a noir film, so characters aren't going to throw up their hands and go yippee. Yeah, at everything. it's not a yuck yuck joke. Um, oh, there. What, what was it? There was a, I think there was a dead, a dead husband joke somewhere. That was the penguin. Yeah, and he even asks if it was too soon. But anyway, um, you just made me remember that. So <laughs> I don't know why. Everyone is wooden. It's like the penguin is the most animated character by far. I do not like Robert as the Batman. He honestly, as soon as that mask comes off, he looks like the emo boy, the emo teenager in high school who sits in the corridor all day cutting himself and saying, I do it because I want to feel something. But he's again, doing it because he thinks it's cool, not because yeah. he's emotionally traumatized. But isn't Batman always... Batman has always had a bit of that, like, he's a broken man. Like, he's got nothing to live for. And I've, Yes. Now, I felt like that's what they were going for, right? He's got nothing to live for. He's unhappy. He's broken. He just wants out. He just wants to... A big theme in this movie is, you know, he says, I'm vengeance, like in the trailer, right? I'm vengeance. Okay. But... I. Well, you're not. You're obviously not vengeance. You just think it's cool. <laughs> there's a literal. Um, there was a. There's a literal anime out there, which is based on um, uh, a period in teenage lives where they think make pretending in public is really really cool. Yeah, there's an actual anime about that, and that's all I can think of now. It I also d- features an older sister who is lethal with a ladle, but. Mm. Uh, she would have made a better Batman. <laughs> quite honestly, um, I don't care for Robert's performance. It uh, makes me really want the Ben Affleck Batman movie that we were supposed to get before Ben Affleck decided he didn't want to play Batman mm-hmm. anymore. But I I, I don't want to hate on Robert Pattinson as Batman because in when he's Batman, when he's suited up as Batman, I liked him. When he was Bruce Wayne... I was like, you're a whiny emo punk and I want to kill you. Um, I mean, to give him credit, he is a step up from the creepy stalker, sparkly vampire fairy. (laughs) Um, But again, we're not saying that these are bad actors. We're just saying that in the context of this movie, I don't think it really worked that well, especially especially for Robert Pattinson as Batman. And I think, I mean, obviously this is a second shot, so we know what we said earlier and all of that. But to sum it down, yes, sum it down, not sum it up. Um, I think uh, Rob, Robert was miscast. I don't think he pulled it off. And he definitely doesn't have the... Well, he didn't have the vocal range, but I can actually forgive that. Voice acting isn't easy. Uh, and again, I didn't, need him also, be, I didn't need him to be like Christian Bale, like, where is she? You know, I didn't need no. that. But it was uh, that there was there was it was very little difference between him as Batman and him as Bruce. Yeah, it's like how has no one figured this out yet? And like a lot of a lot of the issues with his acting, I think, are a reflection of his personal acting ability in conjunction with the writing and the direction. Because you watch, I watch Blade Runner, uh, the original, and there are deliberate small gestures mm. which are meant to give off certain elements of character. This movie is basically devoid of any. 
there's not much nuance in in some of the performances. Mm. I think I think Catwoman there's nuance and Penguin definitely has nuance in that Catwoman, character. Catwoman and Penguin do, but yes. I wouldn't say any of the others do. Gordon yes. does. So like as far as Selena goes, uh, she is supposed to be the character that you're emotionally attached to. So she is. She's I the emotional remember. hook of the movie. Yeah, yeah, the emotional hook. But even her performance is sort of, well, almost, um, it's almost so miserable, miserable a performance, not miserable in her performance, that uh, when someone she cares about dies, so what? Yeah. Moving on. Yeah, it was a you bit know, like it's... that. It was like, oh, okay. And... Like things happen, <laughs> like things happen that should be a big emotional moment. You're like, oh, all right. Yeah, what is it? Oh, they died. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Oh, the Riddler sent another note. Okay, let's check that out. It was like, oh, all right. Yeah. And I felt like, you know what? You know what really got me was the ending. And we're not going to give it away. But the way this film ends, and it does end with uh, a little bit of a tease to set up a possible sequel, was cringy uh, as sh- Oh, my God. The or, the dialogue. So, the dialogue. Some of the dialogue. Yeah, the some dialogue of the dialogue sucks. was pretty bad. One of... One of the best, what should have been a really good scene to the movie was Gordon and Penguin yelling at each other. And you know what? It sucked. Because I was I listening to scene. it. I didn't mind that scene. No spoilers, but I didn't mind that scene. Uh, it wasn't It wasn't sort of like the uh, overall scene. It it's had the, its moments. The dialogue. But, um, it was sort of like the actual yelling component mm. where um, they're just sort of shouting at each other down. That was just sort of like, why? You know what else why? I found really... Uh, so there's the... There, there's an element of this movie that I like that they did that I haven't seen done in a Batman movie. And it kind of spoke to a bit of the comic book-ness um, of it where Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne narrates a bunch of the movie. And I like that. We haven't seen that in the Batman movie before. It reminded me of, you know, reading Batman comics and you see, you know, you see his thought bubble where you're like, you know, I, you know the bad guys are on the roof. I should jump down and kill them, right? Like something like that, whatever it was, right? Mm. So I like that element. But again, I feel like the dialogue didn't serve it well. And and I felt like a lot of this movie, there's so much exposition in this movie. There's a lot of explaino and not enough show don't tell, you know? And I get yeah. it, it's a detective movie. There are things to <laughs> decipher and discover and you want to see people talk about things and discuss things. But there was a lot of that. And almost too much of that. And the, and, the sorry, sorry, sorry. The yeah. dialogue, the voice, the Bruce Wayne's narration, especially at the end of the movie. I know what I have to become. Like it was, it was, it was eye rolling. It was pretty bad. It was bad. <laughs> the dialogue was bad. And even the, even the way he said it too, it was like, oh God. And it just sort of took me out. There were moments like that in the movie where it just sort of took me out of the film. But there are things that I like about the movie. Positive, James. Be positive. Yes. Think the of, movie ended. The movie ended. Look, that's just a positive. I don't want to be that harsh on it. I've, I look, look I, I like is... the penguin car chase. I like some of the action scenes. I love the Batman Catwoman, you know, dynamic. Uh, mm. I just didn't think overall the movie fit together as a as a overall package. Uh, I mean, overall it really did suck. <laughs> like there's nothing to it. It's a 3-hour slog. It's and it's pretty it's pretty rough to try and get but, Yeah. To be honest, I mean, you've only got so long until... You've only got so long to make a first impression. You've only got so long to suck me into the early. But usually I can come around when you get later into a film. But frankly, but I only start would have started liking this film at about the three and a half hour mark. That's it doesn't it go ended. for three and a half hours. That's how bad it gets. You like you, Your favourite bit of this movie was when we got up and walked out. Yes. After the credits. <laughs> yes, it was. It was, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm not as harsh on it as you. Like, I... I well, remember... At least I'm not trying to be. I also... Uh, the scenes that I think I would have liked, mm. I ended up not being able to watch because flashy lights everywhere. I'm not going to lie. If you've... If you're, and I'm, I'm not qualified to give medical advice. Like, just saying that right now. But if you've got epilepsy, I would... I yeah. would be cautious watching this movie because... Or if you're particularly photosensitive. Yeah. Because I got a headache. Yeah. And this was repeated so throughout did I. the film. 
Yeah. Oh, you got a headache too. I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was the flashing lights or if it was some of the story. And the, like, you know, and again, I like the... I like the different incarnations of these characters. I like seeing, you know, big franchises, long running franchises like a Batman try new things because to me, if you, you know, you're getting into a franchise like a Batman, which has been a long, long, long franchise, you know, you've always got to try and do new things. And I appreciate the swings that they took in this movie. I appreciate them doing and trying new things because if you don't try new things in a long running franchise, it's going to get stale. It's the only way to evolve a franchise you know like star wars where in episode eight with last jedi a lot of people don't like it i do sue me but ryan okay. johnson tried something different to take the franchise in a different direction so it doesn't get stale so i understand and i appreciate matt reeves coming in saying we're gonna try and do some things in this movie that's a bit different to what we've done before but for me personally and for james it didn't work no and there are people out there that love this movie. And if you love this movie, that's fantastic. I don't want to take away from that. I don't want to change anyone's minds. I just ultimately let this movie feeling like, what was the point? What is the takeaway from this film? I'm not sure what I'm supposed to take away from the film <laughs> yeah. aside from, we want to do another one. But up, up, but up, but, you know? Yeah. I mean, so I would liken it to Blade Runner, the original one, because thematically it's actually very similar. It's a better movie though. Blade Runner is a better movie. <laughs> I can't even watch the first Blade Runner anymore. Mm. It's too old. Um, I do have an issue. The older the film gets, the less likely yeah. Yeah, I am yeah, yeah, to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, I know that you know this. Yeah, but I know this. Yeah. They haven't yeah. heard because we've deleted the old one now. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, um, but like Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I think it's too long. But the thing is, there was actually a point in that film where there was actually a good plot twist. You get somebody. And I, I feel like the the Batman had the pro- had that problem where it was like there is no plot it's, twist. It's trying to, but but it led you to believe that there was going to be. It tried several of them. Yeah. Um, this isn't. No, just <laughs> no. I I feel this like is... I feel like eventually we're gonna get to the point. We've talked about this movie so much that now it's just evolved into no, no. We don't like no. it. Well, because, all right, so to to enunciate more appropriately. Mm. Yeah, this use is, your words. Yes, I shall enunciate. Uh, I'm watching Blade Runner 2049. It's a long film. Of, I think three hours again. I think Definitely, it's like two, yeah, 245, something like that. Something like that. Uh, I am curious. There were a few things I did like early on. It did actually help hold my attention early. But then the... Plot twist, which only comes at like the two hour mark, uh, that one actually did hit me and that one bothered me quite a bit. And in fact, there was actually foreshadowing all the way up to that. When I look back at the film, I go, oh yeah, because I can actually see that, yes, they were trying to build up to this. There were subtle clues as to the actual mystery. Now, Batman doesn't have this. It's not a detective movie. You've got clues. Well, I would say that's not. You've got clues which are solved two to three scenes later. You don't have a mystery that you're dwelling on. There is no foreshadowing. I po- pointed out one of the bad guys almost instantly. But they and sort then, of skip over a lot of the mystery. Like Yeah. So then there is no mystery. And then but then they're not replacing it with action either. It's just weird, empty scenes. Yeah. It, I mean, some of them were good, uh, but it's a lot of collection of scenes that like a, a collection of Scenes, a collection of Batman stuff that we want to do, and so we'll just put yeah. it in there. And it was a lot of Batman versus Mob. Yeah, and, and uh, Batman versus Mob gets stale after a while. After about an hour, I was like, Batman versus Mob. Okay, we've yeah. done that. Move on. Mm. I mean, they did. I will give it credit. Its action scenes did usually involve a few characters. I loved. I really loved <laughs> the action in this movie. Um, and then, but then. Yeah, the, some of the action I would have liked, I didn't see it. And you then the other it. action I did see, I didn't think it was quite up to par. Yeah. Uh, it just sort of fell a bit flat. Um, though towards the end, those scenes do generally get better. I will give the movie that. Uh, it's it's good. This, the ending scenes are actually some of the better stuff. I don't know about that. 
I, well, I, 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 I think, I think the ending was overall a weak. Or are you talking about like the no, no, third no, act um, action uh, stuff? The when third it act actually, action. When it actually reaches the physical action. Yeah, 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 yeah. Following on from that, there were a few good scenes. Yes. Not necessarily dialogue. No. But there were a few good scenes. There's actually a good scene uh, where the sunlight in the distance. You know the dawn. what? Yeah, it, I think it's sunrise or sunset, something like that. But mm. it's Batman and Cat... And it's, it, there's a shot of it in the trailer too. There's Batman and Catwoman. They're standing there, they're talking and... You know, she's saying the bat and the cat, right? Like, again, I there is see, there is stuff in this movie to like. There is stuff in this movie that I like. There are elements to this movie that I think are really fascinating. I just don't think that it ultimately came together as a complete package, um, mm. and it left me feeling a little disappointed. And again, I appreciate them doing something different. I really, I, I was really excited about this movie, and I ultimately left feeling a little a lot let down actually by this film. Um, but you know, Hey, look, if they do a sequel, I'll see it. James won't, but I will. No, not at all. <laughs> James is not this going is... to see the sequel. Um, this was like, I'm really, I'm re- sorry. I'm really cl- curious about how this movie is going to do financially because I, I just don't know because be with the three hour runtime and it's not a movie you can bring kids to. No, they would get bored. Yeah. Uh, so this is adults only. Yeah. It's, it does have some torture in it, uh, so that is actually a genuine warning for anybody considering watching this movie. But I just feel like the kids are going to get bored because I just feel like there's not enough. Like oh, it's, it's very. You might also traumatize them. Well, yeah, maybe. Um, and I don't. I'm not saying you know. Oh, this movie didn't have you know like an end game level you know action scene. I did. You know, I don't need a lot of wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. I just. No. The movie overall, to me was not overall overall entertaining. You've got you can have a lot of action without actually having a fight scene. But you can have no action in a movie and still be riveting. You can, which is um a good example of that I think is Arrival. Something like that. Arrival, uh, Dune is another one. Dune does not have a lot of action. Yeah. There is so action it, in it, not a lot of it. Yeah. And for the most part it is a very there's you know a lot of it's a very dialogue heavy movie, but it's it's to me it was it was riveting. I, I couldn't take my eyes off that off that movie. And I felt like in the Batman, I just and again I don't I don't want to sit here and make a list of well this movie was better than Batman and this movie was better. But we're just using them as examples of elements that Batman tried to bring together that didn't ultimately didn't work. And like on as an offshoot of that, one thing which really did hurt my viewing experience is the score. Oh yeah. Like the the music itself is actually fine. I don't have an issue with it. But why do you I mean I'm I don't know my instruments, but some scene some scenes it sounded like they had really heavy bass going on But it wasn't somebody going somebody talking. <sighs> talking. Yeah. Um saying yeah. Have you been or yeah. something like that? And it, there was and there was score over over dialogue oh, to yeah, the point that. where I feel like in the sound mix they should have toned the score down when there was dialogue mm-hmm. because you couldn't really hear what they were saying. It was consistently too loud throughout yeah. the film and it really did rip overbearing. Uh, it really did destroy the immersion. Yeah. And the other thing is so firstly this movie has jump scares. Yeah. I mean failed jump scares. I laughed at both of them because I thought they were fucking hilarious. Sorry, but it has jump scares. I want you to try and be positive. I want you to think of think of some things you actually liked about the movie aside from getting up and leaving. I liked that it was brought to you by <laughs> uh, Electoral Mayor Thomas Wayne. Can you actually think of it? You you can't think of a moment or a scene that you liked in the movie, can you? Uh, I just want you to I try and not be we... such a negative Nancy, says the guy who also is sitting here being such a negative Nancy. It, hmm, to be nice to it. Be nice. No. No? I can't. Okay. No, it, it's one of those films where um, I don't have any, I don't think it's as bad as Moonfall, which I saw by myself. Oh, look. I, I do not like Moonfall. I don't, I, I don't <laughs> want to see, I don't want to sound like this movie is absolute garbage. Because it's There's not. worse. It's not absolute sure. garbage. I don't think it's a good movie. I don't, I don't think it's a good movie. And I, 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 when we were driving home last night, I was like, I liked it 
just. And when I woke up this morning, I thought, no, I I don't. You know, sometimes you need to sit on a movie after you've seen it. And this is a movie that I think I'll be thinking about for another week, just thinking about how much it disappointed me. Not not as bad as like a one one eighty four, which that movie just ruined my life. But, <laughs> but oh yeah, you know, he got kicked out of his I, next two rental properties that way. Yeah, yeah. Lost his house, lost yeah, his wife I've, and children. I've, yeah, it's completely. Yeah, I I took up a, a got gambling. Got conscripted into the Russian <laughs> got, military. Got, got, <laughs> took up gambling. Um, Accidentally declared war on China. China, yeah. Anyway, um, James, any final thoughts on the Batman? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> oh wow, it just sucks. There's yeah, nothing. You got to try and be more positive in your outlook on things, James. You just didn't understand it, okay? You just didn't understand it. No, I didn't understand how two hundred million dollars <laughs> ends up with that. <laughs> Look, two hundred million dollars, and you can't hire a screenwriter. You, you can't, can't hire you, a script doctor. You can't have someone you check it over. You couldn't go down to the store and pick up a couple of lights. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one thing. So one thing that I really don't like is it does, but some other people may. It does have a political storyline, and a core tenet of the movie is about. I say core tenet. Really, it's anything. This movie has no focus. Uh, it could be about political ambition. It could also be about reparations, broken promises. Corruption. Uh, it could be a commentary on substandard living. But the problem is that it tries to do so much that it doesn't actually focus in on any one thing. So it just ends up as this mess. Now, part of the problem with it that I found is... Firstly, you've got a political storyline. That can deal with corruption. That can also deal with politicians. I don't want to deal with politicians. I'm sick of it. I get enough of that at home. My brother and my father are both into politicians. So no, I don't want to deal but with But isn't them. that an element of Gotham? Uh, like look, in all of is, the Batman yeah. mythos, like the, the, the political, the corruption, the seedy underworld, the shady people of, you know, in yeah. positions of power, that's a Gotham thing. But I think you're yeah. right about when you say this movie didn't have much focus. It was kind of a bunch of different things and they wanted to do in this movie that they just shoved in there and it didn't it's really like, coalesce. It didn't come together. It's like instead of alluding to real life, it sort of said, well, these people are bad because this and these people suffering because those people are bad. I thought it was a bland movie. Very bland. I thought it was a bland movie. And um, it all, one thing it does do, which I realise that some people might appreciate, is it does actually have references to real life politics only very passing ones small ones mm. but uh, i didn't notice i didn't I, honestly i didn't pick up on that but that's just me i don't pick up on a lot i'm dumb not dumb it's just uh it depends on whatever's popular at the time i am like um, the batman movie i'm dim look if this movie was made a year from now <laughs> it would probably be saying oh yeah russia's gone to war with ukraine so i don't know about that i don't Russia. i think that's a bit i mean then again <laughs> Then again, I mean that's, uh, that's the mo- way to get me demonetized. But <laughs> then, sorry. Then again, the movie it it does hit you over the head with a lot of with a lot of stuff. Just gonna say, I I, I mean I've got examples, but spoilers. <laughs> um, yeah, I look. Ultimately, I found myself disappointed by this film, yes. and I really didn't want to be disappointed by this film. I had a lot of faith in it. I was really looking forward to it. I don't know where your anticipation level was for it, um, but I it, wasn't. I thought it was going to be better than it was. Yeah, I wanted more from and this movie, and I don't think it delivered on the central themes that it set up. And the story to me didn't come to a satisfying conclusion. The Riddler, the Riddler, why? So the Riddler was literally a savant. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure they were trying to go for ASD, something like that. It's not. I actually found it to be quite an uh, an offensive stereotype, which is the weird, the weirdest thing coming from me, because I love the racial, you sexual, you and dark you humor. You don't get offended by much in movies. <sighs> no, not really. No. Um, it's only like there was one movie where uh, they kept going on. Oh, Black Panther, because that. Um, you didn't like Black Panther. Ah. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, I we're going to move on from that. From, that, from, <laughs> from what James doesn't like. Yep. Is, I, uh, I love that this has become like just a, 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 a venue for James just to, you know, get oh, yeah, all of yeah. airing of the grievances for any movie he's never liked ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and I mean, my personal list now is, well, uh, I hate... I hate Black Panther because I'm racist. I hate... <laughs> you hate Captain Marvel uh, because you're sexist. Yep, sexist. Yep, yep, and now you hate Batman because you hate bats. I hate bats. Yeah, yep. well, bats started a two-year global pandemic. <laughs> so we started a pandemic with a, ba- with a disappointing bat, and we've ended the pandemic with a disappointing bat. Anyway, guys, that'll do it for our review of the Batman. I hope you guys got something out of this review or enjoyed it or didn't, whatever, that's fine. We're just expressing... I I, want to stress this, okay? Because I know that there are going to be comments, and that's fine. Bring your comments. Do whatever you want to do. But I know we're going to get comments saying stuff like, you know, you're just being negative. You're just complaining. Stop your whining. Stop your whinging. No. This is... You know, we're here to give opinions. And I'm not saying you have to agree with our opinions. That's fine. There are people that love this movie. I, You have no idea how badly I want to be able to sit here and say, I love this movie. It's my favorite movie of the year. I've never seen a better Batman movie. And honestly, from the trailers, I was going into this movie expecting really great things. Trust and maybe me. that's on me. I should have left my expectations at the door. But the trailers were fucking great. Trust me. He was excited about this film. I was excited. You didn't have to share a car with him. The trailers were great, right? They were fantastic. And it always sucks when you see fantastic trailers to a movie that ends up being really bad. Um, But again, you know, look, if you love this movie, you love this movie, that's great. I wish I could be there right there Mm. with you, but I didn't. It was disappointing. Overall, I felt like the movie didn't come to a satisfying conclusion. Don't really like Robert Pattinson's Batman, to be quite honest with you. I really like Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I really like Penguin. I, you know, Penguin, by the way, is getting his own spin-off series. That I can see. Yeah, that that's going to be fun. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. And um, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell so you never miss out on my take on all things movies, even though this is the second take of this video. Uh, mm. I want to thank uh, James for doing this review with me twice. twice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And we will see you guys next time.